In this video, I want to go over my impressions on the latest macOS version, which is 26. I have it here on my browser. I installed it in a computer, created a new volume, installed it there. I have not installed it on my main machine. I don't know much about it yet. I just logged into the computer and I basically haven't done anything with it. So I just want to discover and uh, quickly take a look at the OS with you and uh, share my thoughts. The computer that I installed it in is in this, the one shown on the screen right now. This is a MacBook Air. It's an M1. It's my wife's computer. Uh, she doesn't know that I installed it, but uh, she doesn't watch my videos, so she will never know about it. I did not install the operating system directly on the main volume. I created a new volume and a new partition basically. I installed it there. The other partition is still going on so I can double boot between this one and uh, the other one I think she still has installed um, Sequoia. What is after Sequoia? No, or what is before Sequoia? Sonoma, yep. She's still in Sonoma. But enough with the talking, let's just jump right in. Okay, so this is the computer, the one shown here. I'm going to type my password and uh, let's log in. Something really cool that macOS allows me to do is to share my mouse and keyboard between my own computer and this other one. So if I move on my main computer to the left, I will bring my cursor over here. And that is done with this little icon here, which is link keyboard and mouse to my MacBook Pro. So wherever my mouse is right now or my cursor is, my keyboard is going to follow. So I'll be able to control this computer using my regular mouse without connecting anything new to it. OK, so the first thing we see here is the desktop. I do like this wallpaper. Looks nice, to be honest. OK, just increasing the brightness. You will not see that, but I see that here on my screen. And that changed that little menu that shows up there. The calendar, I'm not sure why it shows that way. It's not consistent with the rest of the theme. But if I click on it, it opened the calendar. I closed it because I have my stuff in there. But uh, now that I clicked on it, it looks better. Let's see if I click on the desktop. It switches back to the old design. I guess it's because it's a beta version. They're still working on that probably. Next, I also see on the top that the menu bar is now transparent. I think it looks a lot like my own sketchy bar configuration in my main computer. So I don't see the bar here anymore. It's just basically transparent. This dock on the bottom has this glass effect. Let me switch to my desktop so you can see that there. Notice that this is my personal Mac OS uh, computer. The very top you see that I don't use the Mac OS menu bar. I use sketchy bar. But the macOS menu bar is there in the background. But this is what I use, Sketchy Bar. I don't use the dock. So if you look here at the bottom, it's always hidden. I don't need it. It's unnecessary, useless completely, at least for me. But I do have to agree that the new design looks better, looks nicer, right? But anyway, the first thing that I'm going to do in my own computer is just hide this and also hide this at the top. So that's one of the things that I want to make sure that this menu bar can actually be hidden like in the previous version. So let's go and take a look. Just going to go to system settings. OK, so this looks different. The corners are way more round compared to the old corners. I don't see that this is transparent. It does have some glass effect there, but it is not transparent. I can drag this around. It moves all right, I guess. But uh, yeah, it looks like there's a piece of glass here specifically. But no, it's not transparent. All right, so here are the settings for the menu bar. Automatically hide and show the menu bar. Always, okay. 
wonderful. So that is excellent. I need to get that out of the way. I'm never going to keep this dock in there. So I'm just going to remove this widget as well. What about the dock? Can we hide that? Of course we can. Wouldn't make sense if we couldn't. That is usually here under desktop and dock and automatically hide and show the dock. So if we click this option, we can hide it. So that is awesome. That will allow me to customize this macOS version the exact same way that I want to configure it. Let me go here to the notification center and I think, yeah, this see what's new in macOS. Let's take a look at this. I'm just going to close the settings here. What's new in macOS? Let's quickly go over this. Feedback assistant. I'm just going to make this bigger. That's what she said. Use the feedback assistant. Okay, next. Apple.com to learn about new features. More tips. The most out of your Mac. And that's it. Oh, that's not useful at all. So based on what we saw there, then we have to go to the page. So let's quickly go over that. This is the Raycast killer. Let's give it a try in a little while. But let's see what else we see here. Just the design, the phone app and live activities from phone. Don't care too much about that. This is cool. Create more powerful shortcuts than ever with Apple intelligence. I have never enabled Apple intelligence. I don't know if I ever will, but uh, yeah, I have it disabled all the time. The sign more you shines through. Okay. I guess we can see that here in notification center or in this other little button. Yeah, there we can see through it. Liquid glass refracts and reflects content in real time, bringing even more clarity to navigation and controls and even more vitality to everything you do. Updated app icons. You can personalize them. I don't care about that at all. Personalized controls and menu bar. Your display feels even larger. I never look at this. I rarely open this. Not useful to me at all. Refreshed apps. Your go-to apps feel fresh and expressive and moving across apps and devices feel more harmonious than ever. Useless. I don't care about this at all. What else do we have here? Okay, that's the last one. Automatically translate text in messages, display live translated captions in FaceTime. Don't care too much about this. Intelligent actions in shortcuts can summarize text, create images, or tap directly into Apple intelligent models to provide responses that feed into your shortcut. Like I said, I don't have this enabled. I always keep it disabled. And the good thing about macOS is that it does not enable it by default. So if you go to system settings, you'll be able to see that all of them come with Apple intelligence disabled. You have to come in here and specifically enable it. Mix emoji and descriptions to make something brand new. Image playground, discover additional ChatGPT styles and have even more control when making images inspired by family friends using Genmoji and image playground. I would have to see if this image playground thing comes up with something actually useful or if it's just a waste of time. I have not tried it. I don't think I will soon. I'll just give him more time or as the primogen would say, I'll let him cook. Continuity helps you work seamlessly across Apple devices and with the phone app and live activities coming to Mac, it's even easier to stay on top of things happening in real time. This is something that I have to get to Apple. It's pretty cool that you can share. My camera is the iPhone right now. I can connect my AirPods to my phone or to my computer relatively easily, right? I just execute a key map on my keyboard and they connect to my computer. The mouse and keyboard, you notice that I can share them between the two computers really easily. I can use one of the laptops as an external monitor. So all of that is pretty nice. Like the clipboard, if I copy something on my computer, I can paste it on my phone. That's actually wonderful. But let's see if we see something new here. The menu bar now features the live activities from your iPhone. And when you click on one, the app opens in iPhone mirroring so you can take action. Okay, so iPhone mirroring is a good idea, but it's not the best. 
you open it, it takes like five seconds to open, blow the phone, doesn't make sense. For that, you just grab the phone and, and use the phone. If you need to share your phone or record it in a video, it's wonderful. But other than that, using this phone mirroring thing on the computer, to me, doesn't make much sense. New phone app, manage unwanted calls. I think I saw something about this. Stay productive while on hold. Hold assist. Notifies you when they're ready. Okay. Biggest spotlight update ever. I think this is one of the only actual useful features. Okay, so let's quickly try this new spotlight. Command space, that's gonna bring it up. Search history and filtering. New browse modes. Command one for applications. Command three for actions. Command two for files. Command four for clipboard. Okay, so command one okay you get the applications mm, not useful at all but uh, let's try here command uh, two for files okay command two for files okay similar to raycast but you can search for your files i hope i don't have anything that i don't have to show in here and it seems that i don't how do i go back backspace um escape takes me out completely i don't know how to go back to this menu command four for a clipboard spotlight can now search clipboard history clipboard history includes items from universal clipboard sensitive information may appear on the clipboard enable okay no results found how do i go back backspace um no it seems i cannot if i type escape takes me completely out command three for actions okay send message start timer create a note send email i did watch something about a video about sending an email i thought that was pretty cool actually looked pretty awesome can it do basic stuff like sums and all that stuff 10 10 plus where's the plus 10 plus 5 not do it here but what if i do it here 10 plus and plus 5 15 is that something that the regular spotlight does in sequoia i don't know i don't use spotlight at all but uh okay spotlight search okay so um spotlights includes your approximate location with search requests to apple you can disable sending search requests to apple in system settings Let's see how smart it is. Remind me to wash the clothes tomorrow at 5 a.m. What is it gonna do? June 25th? That is today, man. I want you to remind me tomorrow. Do I have to do it a different way? Let's see. Do I have to select it as an action first? Command three, remind, and then type here, remind, new reminder. Okay, remind me, remind. Now what? Do I have to click on it? Add quickies. Remind. New reminder. Double click. Okay. So you have to double click or hit enter. But what if I wanted to do it differently? Like what if I want to be smarter about it? Right. Uh, I'm just going to type remind. New reminder. I'm going to hit enter here. Add a reminder to reminders with alert. Okay. Add. I'm just going to type here. Wash the clothes tomorrow at 5 at 5 a.m. to reminders with no alert. If I hit enter, it saved the reminder. Okay, so here's the reminder. It just added the text in the title, but it did not schedule it at 5 a.m. tomorrow, which is what I expected to happen. So that is not useful at all maybe i didn't try it out correctly maybe it was an issue on my side but the first impression is not great reminder maybe i missed something just gonna hit enter here now it took me to the reminders app how do i bring it up remind new reminder okay so here to reminder okay watch the clothes if we hit escape reminders no alert what if we select here alert at time 5 a.m let's hit new reminder how do i oh was added already it seems because of the check mark here let's exit out of this now let's bring up the reminders app watch the clothes today at 5 a.m did i specify the wrong day <sighs> If it would be intelligent enough, I would be able to type this in human language and it would be able to understand what I'm trying to do, which is a reminder tomorrow at 5 a.m. Simple stuff, but okay. So maybe I'm being too hard because this is just a beta. It's not a finished product yet. So far, personally, for me as a power user, there's nothing new. Just the style of the windows, which does not add any benefit to me at all. I understand that if you're a basic user, this is just going to be awesome because it's going to look better and all that stuff. 
I honestly don't care about any of that. All I care is about my own custom configuration. So as long as I can hide the menu bar on the top and that I can hide the dock, I'm good because I spend most of the day in the terminal or the browser. Basically, that's it. Terminal, browser, few other applications, but not that many. So uh, it's just another Mac OS release. Nothing new. So would I recommend you to upgrade? No, not at all. Just keep using Raycast. Keep using a stable Mac OS version. If there's a specific feature that you need to update because of, like this containers one, right? That is only compatible in Mac OS 26, works on Mac OS 15, but containers cannot communicate with, uh, with each other. So for that, you need to have Mac OS 26. That's one of the reasons why I installed it on this other computer, because I'm creating a course right now. You'll be able to find it in the video description in which I go over containers. I want to deploy some um, actual valid and useful containers using these containers tool that Apple released. So um, that's the only reason. Other than that, you just get a few cosmetic features here and there. Nothing major, nothing useful, especially if you use a customized Mac OS system. If you're a basic user and you like the way that it looks, upgrade just for the looks, see if that's something that matters to you. But bottom line, nothing worth upgrading. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, subscribe so that you can see when I post new videos. Also make sure to go and check out my containers playlist so you can go and learn more about that. If you want to support me to keep creating videos, consider becoming a member. I'm going to leave the link in the video description down below. Also, please make sure to share this video with your friends. Leave comments down below because that helps with the algorithm. Okay, so I hope you learned something from this video. If you want to learn how I deploy a new macOS computer using a script, go and check the video that is going to show up right here. I install all of the applications, all of the system settings, basically everything. And if you want to see a list of my favorite macOS applications, you can go and check the video that is going to be showing down here. See you in the next video.